Hello and welcome to our second episode of The Financial Pathway, an episode where we will focus on credit and debt. Thank you for joining us today. I am Tim Hedberg, and I am here with my colleague, Brandon Hovey. We work as financial services representative for Covenant Trust. In our last episode, we introduced the financial pathway that you will see on your screen. The financial pathway shows how a person's values and a person's unique purpose, mission, and call are to interact and influence the stones of spending, investing, retirement, and giving. If you weren't able to join us for episode one, we'd encourage you to watch the video to learn more. Today is our second episode, and we're going to be talking about credit and debt. Yeah, Tim, credit and debt are both scary words. As the cartoons on the screen show, they can also be confusing and stress-inducing words as well. On the left-hand side here, we have a man who's running a race, and he's trying to get a high score. He's trying to get a high credit score. But many of us, maybe this guy, doesn't know exactly what goes into getting a high credit score. Uh, what does it entail? Uh, why is it important to have a high credit score? How do we adjust uh, our credit score if we have a low one? We're going to talk about that in a little bit. And on the right-hand side here, we have a man who's proposing to the love of his life. Uh, he's saved up his money. He's bought a very big, beautiful ring, and he's got down on one knee. And after he pops the question, in response, she says, I'd love to, but I'm already in a long-term relationship. And that is because she is shackled to her student loan officer. The average uh, student debt in America is somewhere around $35,000, and the average household student debt is around $47,000. And so student debt is a very big deal, uh, as are other kinds of debt as well. Now, in terms of total debt, the average American household owes $138,722. This puts the consumer debt for the United States just north of $14 trillion. Uh, but most alarming is the type of debt. So for credit cards, uh, there is around $6,500 per household of revolving credit card debt. This is debt that is not paid off every single month, uh, that continues on and grows and balloons uh, with interest. And so this is very uh, alarming. Mortgage debt is right around $200,000, or if you're in California, $10 million, something like that. I don't know. It's very expensive uh, to live in certain parts of the country, and so some of this uh, really depends on where you're at. Uh, but auto loans are around $28,000. Like we said, student loans are $47,000. So debt is uh, a very significant thing, a very big thing. A lot of clients, families, individuals we talk about struggle with debt. Uh, they're trying to create game plans to get a handle on debt. And so we want to explore this a little bit deeper. We want to start out uh, by talking about uh, our credit scores and why those matter, uh, where they come from, and, and that kind of thing. So Tim, can you maybe explain to us some of the basics uh, of how we get a credit score and why it's important? Sure. Um, each of us have a credit score, and a credit score determines how big of risk we appear to be to a lender. The lower our credit score, the bigger risk we appear to be to a lender, and consequently, the higher rate of interest we're going to be charged. Um, and conversely, the higher the credit score we have, the lower a risk we are to a lender, and therefore, the lower interest rate that we will be charged on that loan. And if you want to find out what your credit score is, we're going to have a link for you in the notes portion of this episode. Um, some of you are probably thinking, so, so what determines my credit score? What are the factors? And there are five factors that determine that influence one's credit score. The first factor is how much do you owe? How, many, uh, how much do you have in loans? And the second factor is, and how much credit do you have available? Uh, the third is, what's your history of repaying loans? And fourth and fifth, how long have you been using credit? And then lastly, what types of debt do you have? Uh, the Bible speaks into this, this credit uh, culture, even back in uh, biblical times. In Proverbs 22.7, we have this verse. 
The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is the slave to the lender. So, Brandon, can you um, help us to see how uh, debt can be bad, but also how it can be leveraged for something good? Yeah, it's good. I really think it's both, Tim. Um, Of course, debt can be dangerous, and that's what this verse is talking about. Uh, Taking on more debt than we should uh, is a very dangerous thing, uh, and it's smart to avoid doing that. But when I think about debt, I kind of picture a fire. Uh, So if you think about a fire, if it's contained, uh, let's say in a fire pit outdoors, uh, it can be a good thing. It can open up new possibilities. It could throw light uh, on things that are around you. And similarly, uh, if somebody takes on good debt, it could help them maybe start a business uh, or get a quality education uh, that will pay dividends later in life. But on the other hand, if The fire is not contained. It can burn down your entire house and it can cause significant damage and heartache. And all of us have known or seen people uh, whom this has happened to, who've taken on too much debt, who've spent more than they make. And that has created this ball and chain picture that we see here on the screen. And so when we're thinking about debt, one helpful way of framing it, uh, as you see on the screen here, is thinking about both good debt and bad debt. So good debt and bad debt. Not all debt is created equal. Uh, On the left-hand side of the screen here, you'll see good debt. And good debt typically uh, has a low interest rate. It's something you believe in. It's something that will grow in value over time. And it fits within your budget and will help your credit score. And so a mortgage or a house uh, could possibly be this. A quality education um, oftentimes is good debt. Business ownership or an investment loan. On the other hand, there's bad debt. And bad debt is where the house is burning down. If you buy a $90,000 Tesla and you make $20,000 a year, that is bad debt, right? You're taking on way more than you can afford. Uh, Oftentimes when it comes to credit cards, uh, the average interest rate is double that of other loans. And so it's something that is more risky or more dangerous. Uh, Oftentimes bad debt will hurt your credit score. And so we see a lot of people using store credit cards Uh, to buy things that perhaps they don't really need, maybe new clothes, uh, and then not paying that off every single month. That's not a smart decision. Same thing with any kind of a cash advance or a payday loan. Not only are you going to pay astronomically high interest rates, they'll also load on uh, fees in the fine print as well. And so when we're thinking about good debt and bad debt, we want to make sure that we're taking on the right type of debt, that we're taking on good debt uh, and avoiding bad debt. But the the third and final thing we want to do is we want to make sure uh, that we are containing our debt, our overall debt as well. And what that means is being aware of what your DTI is. Now, DTI uh, is something that's very simple. It stands for debt to income ratio, debt to income ratio. And the way you get it is you divide the monthly debt payments that you have for all of the different sources of debt with your gross monthly income. So you stack up your your mortgage payments, you stack up your car payments, your credit card payments, any kind of debt you have, and then you divide that by your gross monthly income and find out what that number or that percentage is. And you want it at or below 36%, ideally. The highest you want it is 43%. Above 43, uh, if you're at like 60, 70%, you're in deep water because if there's a change in income, if there's an unexpected medical bill, uh, it could completely ruin you. And so we want to know what our DTI is. We want that to be a healthy number. Uh, A lot of creditors will look at this as they're determining the risk of you uh, so that we're containing debt. We want to make sure that we're taking on good debt and not bad. Yeah, great. Thank you, Brandon. That's really helpful. Uh, So let's uh, move now to uh, talking about paying off debt. Uh, How do we do that? What are some strategies? Well, as you just alluded to, Brandon, it's important to first classify your debts. Are they good debts or bad? And if able to, you want to pay off your bad debt first. That will make the most sense. Uh, secondly, secondly, you want to review uh, what your monthly payments are. And thirdly, uh, the remaining balances that you have. And fourthly, you want to find out the interest rate that each of those uh, loans are charging you. And lastly, if possible, you should inquire about refinancing options, meaning you give the lender a a call or an email and ask them for a lower interest rate. Um, 
The example on the screen shows how someone can save quite a bit of money by reducing their interest rate by just 0.71%. Um, lower interest rates translate into big savings. So don't be afraid to shop around uh, for different lenders to see if you can have a lower uh, interest rate. And once you've done this, you can begin to attack debt. You can begin to literally pay it off. And you want to uh, pay off uh, those debts that charge the highest interest uh, rates. Um, another strategy, if a lot of your interest rates are uh, similar, um, perhaps you want to pay off the debt that is creating the most anxiety within you. Um, that's often a strategy uh, people use. And once you begin to fall into this pattern and once some debts begin to fall away, it might make sense for you to begin to invest some of that same money that would have been going towards debt in uh, some investments of some kind, which will over time earn you uh, money, earn you four to seven percent of, of income. Thank you, Tim. That's helpful. One of the things I was thinking about uh, as you were explaining that is uh, a lot of times when I'm meeting with clients, um, they'll be in a situation where they have a lump of money, right? Mm -hmm. Where they have maybe extra income coming in every month or uh, some kind of a windfall. And so they have cash, they have money, uh, but they also have debt. And so they want to know, uh, what do I do? You know, when, when you come to this fork in the road, you know, do you invest it in the market? Do you pay down a loan? Do you put it in savings? Uh, and that kind of thing. And just as a general rule of thumb, I think a, a few things that are helpful to clarify is when it comes to credit card debt, you can see here at the top of the screen, the average credit card uh, uh, interest rate is somewhere hovering around 17%. If you have uh, extra money, uh, you should almost always pay down your credit card. Unless you have a zero emergency fund, you should almost always uh, make that the highest priority. Uh, we want to get rid of credit card debt because it's astronomically high. Uh, it becomes a little bit more difficult when it comes to student debt. Student debt oftentimes is kept at a very low level. So let's say uh, you have a student loan for 5%. Uh, after a tax deduction, you'd be at somewhere around 4.5%. Uh, however, if you could get 7% in a well-diversified portfolio, meaning by investing it, you can get 7%, that may be a little better because you're getting a better uh, ROI, a better return uh, on your money. Um, however, when it comes to loans, of course, uh, these are fixed rates that are guaranteed. Uh, so we want to use some discretion when it comes to student loans. Sometimes it makes sense to pay down the student loan. Other times it makes sense to invest it. Uh, when it comes to mortgages, however, uh, these are usually even lower interest rates. You can see here on the screen the national average, according to Bankrate and NerdWallet, of a mortgage uh, is 4.68. This was a few months ago. It's probably even lower than that now. Um, mortgages are a great way, a very cost-effective way at least, uh, to buy a home and have a low interest rate. Uh, and oftentimes if you have uh, money that comes in, it's wise to sock that away in retirement uh, and not let your entire, entire retirement plan ride on your mortgage, right? So we want to use discretion when it comes to that. And typically uh, that means investing instead of paying down a mortgage. But every situation is unique. And so because every situation is unique, um, in terms of next steps, uh, you may want to set up a meeting with a financial professional to talk about your unique situation. And at Coven Covenant Trust, we offer free 30-minute uh, consultations with a local financial services representative in your area. And you could simply uh, hit the link at the bottom of the description in this video, and that will connect you with uh, a place where you could set up a meeting with a local financial services representative in your area. Uh, also, we recommend you knowing your credit score. Uh, many different banks offer free credit reports. Uh, Capital One offers it uh, as much as you'd like. Uh, other banks, for instance, offer it once a month. You can go to myfico.com or annualcreditreport.com and pull a free copy there as well. But it's very important that you know your uh, credit score so that you can track it, monitor it, improve it. Uh, as well as identify any source of fraudulent activity um, on your behalf. Finally, uh, if you have significant debt, it's very important that you create a game plan. It's very important uh, that you consider refinancing options, uh, loan consolidation, where you pull in three or four 
or more different loans into one servicer, if that's something that's helpful for you. In some cases, bankruptcy is an option. Um, but oftentimes, we tell clients that a great place to start is to link up with a group like the Consumer Credit Counseling Service, which is a nonprofit. And uh, what they do, uh, and other organizations like them, is they negotiate with lenders on your behalf, uh, oftentimes for free. So that's, that's a great service. You can go to credit.org and explore more about that. Great. Thanks, Brandon. So thank you uh, for joining us today. And if you'd like to discuss credit and debt or other issues like estate planning, uh, money management, charitable giving, or if you're part of a faith community and uh, would like to talk about stewardship issues or questions, there's a financial service representative in your area that you can meet with. You can go to our website, covenanttrust.com. And if you want to learn more about Covenant Trust, we have a YouTube channel with other presentations. And soon, Brandon and I will have other episodes focusing on the other stones in the pathway to financial freedom, investing, retirement, and generosity. Uh, blessings to you.